Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Brutal Legend for PC, Mac, Linux, Xbox 360, and PS3. This is an action-adventure and real-time strategy game by Double Fine Productions and originally published by Electronic Arts, although the PC, Mac, and Linux versions were all handled by Double Fine themselves. And it was released first in October of 2009 for the consoles, then later on in February of 2013 for PC. And then later on, of course, Mac and Linux versions came out. It's a pretty interesting game. Just think about the combination of genres, for instance. Action-adventure and real-time strategy. Plus, think about that it's Double Fine and Tim Schafer, and that it's metal-themed. It's a very unique game. And when it came out, it got some pretty decent reviews, but there was a lot of contention around this combination of action adventure and real-time strategy because they built it up to be pretty much nothing but an action adventure game and that just wasn't the case so the real question here is does it transcend the problem of misleading advertising it's not false advertising it's misleading and actually be a really good game or does it do something else entirely well, as far as the presentation goes, it certainly looks like a game from 2009 on consoles. That's not a bad thing. I mean, the textures are fairly low res for the most part. And they don't look bad, but they're just fairly low res. But other than that, the modeling and animation are pretty solid, and they have some nice effects here and there, particularly particle effects. But when you go to the PC version four years later, you expect it to look better, particularly when they say that they have enhanced it for the PC. Now, what that basically means is they've added in a few PC-specific effects that are much harder to pull off on console and increase the draw distance. That's about it. It really doesn't look all that much different from the original game's release in 2009, so don't expect a huge graphical upgrade if you played the original uh, console version. But it certainly doesn't look bad, and part of that is because of the very, very unique art style. This thing is so incredibly metal that I don't think they could possibly cram any more metal into the art style. And it's from all walks of metal. You've got your uh, old school heavy metal, you've got the black metal, you've got the, the doom metal and all that. All of that is present and accounted for in the art style and they've done a phenomenal job with it. The world that you're running around in feels very unique as a result. and. I really do like the uh, visual style that they've gone for with things like the units as well. It makes every faction in the game feel completely unique. And so the visuals are really propelled forward by this art style rather than the quality of them themselves. And then there's the sound design, which is pretty fantastic across the board, I have to say. Now, while your sound effects are pretty much functional, they're very good at what they do, and... It's not really those that you're going to be paying attention to for the most part. You're going to be paying attention to the two other things that are in the uh, sound department. The first of them is the voice acting. Fantastic voice acting across the board. Even from people who aren't actually voice actors, like Rob Halford and, and of course, Lemmy. So, even those guys do phenomenal jobs. Of course, they're pretty much playing themselves, which is even better. But and Then, of course, you also have... The wonderful talents of people like Jack Black. Of course, Jack Black's hilarious in this game. He does a great job with it. And you can really tell that he was excited to work with something like this with, with the enthusiastic performance he gives as Eddie. And then there's the music. The music is a feast for metalheads. There were a couple of bands that were excluded, sure, but... It has music from pretty much every genre of metal you can think of. And we're talking some great stuff here. You got Ozzy. You got uh, Motorhead. You got, you know, Judas Priest. You got them all. And you even got the stuff that's a bit more obscure, like Enslaved and KMFDM. So, fantastic licensed soundtrack that really does fit the game very well because they again are going for the full-on metal thing and unfortunately I can't play any of that music for you because it's all licensed so yeah sorry about that but suffice to say the soundtrack in this game has a lot of tracks in it and 
most of them are pretty solid, if you're a metalhead especially. Now, I'm not a big fan of certain genres of metal, so those particular songs didn't really appeal to me all that much. But what genres of metal I do like, they're present and accounted for, and of course the songs in them, pretty solid. So the metal soundtrack definitely fits the game well and really gives it a, a big plus. But obviously what really matter are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this is that you play as Eddie Riggs. He's a roadie for a really, really terrible band. And while trying to save a member of the band one night, he ends up actually getting crushed by falling parts of the stage, and some of his blood ends up in his belt buckle, which turns out is this amulet for the uh, eternal fire beast Ormagodon. Yeah. At any rate, he basically takes uh, Eddie to this really bizarre heavy metal world. And Eddie finds out that he is effectively the chosen one, who some see as being there to liberate humanity from their enslavement by the evil Emperor Diviculus and his proxy, General Lion White. And so, the story is mostly Eddie trying to uh, fight back against Diviculus and, uh, of course, Lion White, but it changes along the way. There's some twists here and there. It's an incredibly ridiculous story that really does seem like Double Fine has written it. And the story itself isn't all that strong, but the characters and the way they actually interact and such is really the strong point with it. Partly because a lot of them are absolutely hilarious. Including the Guardian of Metal, who is Ozzy. Just straight up Ozzy Osbourne. Why? Because Ozzy, that's why. At any rate, the plot itself is not the strong point, but the dialogue is hilarious. There's tons of great jokes throughout the entire game. You'll just be running around and finding things, and you'll just, you can't help but find yourself chuckling or outright laughing at things because they're just funny. And at the same time, it really does feel like it was written for metal fans, by metal fans. So... It definitely has that going for it. And then there's the gameplay, which is the big point of contention for a lot of people. You see, the way they built it up in trailers and such was that it's effectively an action-adventure game. Whereas, in reality, the action-adventure part of it is only a very small part of the game, actually. Most of the game is actually this very rudimentary tactics system, this real-time strategy system. And it really does feel like a console game at heart. Now, remember, I'm playing this on PC, so I noticed some issues with controls, where it really did feel sometimes like it would have been better on a controller, particularly with aiming the cursor when you're actually uh, doing the real-time strategy bits because it doesn't actually have a crosshair or a cursor or anything like that on the screen. It has this column of light that it just goes where you're, you're specifically pointing. So that does feel like it was built more for a controller. But the system itself is just incredibly rudimentary. The hack-and-slash action-adventure part of it is actually the best part of the game, which is really weird. Because if you take this game as a whole, it's a sort of open world with missions, and these missions result in you controlling your army, which uh, is spawned at the stage, and you need to have fans, who are these spirit kind of things, in order to spawn units and upgrade your stage so you can get better units. Each of the units has their own specific ups and downs, their own special abilities, and you can actually go up to a unit and do a combined action with them effectively. For instance, if you go up to the roadies who have these uh, big towers of amps, you'll actually jump up on the stack of amps and the combined ability with them is to actually just hit the amps and uh, effectively launch out the shockwave kind of thing. So, different things like that give a lot of variety to the actual units as well as the uh, style of command that you're going to have to do. The problem is, 
the game ends up devolving into this very, very basic system. You go and you find a fan geyser, effectively. That, that's pretty much what they are. And you have to use the solo, which is just a uh, timed event where you're having to match buttons. It's pretty simple. I guess you could call it a QTE, but it's really not a QTE. And that will allow you to build a merch booth on there. And then you can get more fans, which you can use to upgrade your stage, which you can use to uh, get units, and then you can go and attack the enemy stage. And basically, once you've destroyed their stage, you win. It's that simple. And ultimately, the battles themselves either turn into extremely fast, very easy fights, or just long, drawn-out, back-and-forth, back-and-forth kind of things if you're doing it wrong, basically. And so, the game itself isn't all that hard. It's just, when you get to the very, very last bits of the game, you find that it really does lose steam. Now, the gameplay is one of the biggest problems of the game, because that hack-and-slash style of gameplay is actually really fun. When you're on the ground, running around... Um, just slaughtering these hordes of really bizarre looking demons and such like that. That's actually really fun. When you hop into the deuce, which is his vehicle, and you can drive around and run over these things and blast things with your various really bizarre weaponry. That's fun. What's not fun is the real-time strategy bit, which is actually the majority of the game. It's actually really boring. And so... The game ends up being this really bizarre combination of styles that some of it works, some of it doesn't really work all that well. It's not deep enough in the strategy department for a real-time strategy fan. It's not action-y enough for an action-adventure fan. It's just somewhere in the middle, and it doesn't really appeal to anyone unless you're just a metalhead. And that was what I found more and more when I was going through this game. I was having a ton of fun with the, the dialogue between the characters and all these great jokes and everything. I was having tons of fun with the uh, immense metal feel, the soundtrack, all of that. And then whenever I got to the real-time strategy bits, I was always just like, oh, here we go again. Better get through this bit so I can go on to the next bit. It's a shame, really, because... If they had really developed that system better, and of course if with the PC version, if they had really dialed in the controls properly, because let's face it, it's not designed for PC controls. It's not designed for a keyboard and mouse. They hang up sometimes. The uh, system for the solos that you have to use is based on number keys for some bizarre reason. Instead of what would obviously be things like A, B, X, Y on an Xbox 360 pad. The radial menus don't really work all that well with a mouse. You have to find the, the trick to using them, which is actually just kind of weird. And in the long run, while parts of the game are just incredibly enjoyable, it is really hard to recommend it. Now, in the long run... I do have to say, this is a 2.5 out of 5, but it is a very interesting game, and I really do hope that they decide to make a sequel or something, or get the funding, I should say, to make a sequel, because if they improve this thing, and they really do fix up that real-time strategy bit, or maybe make it a straight-up action-adventure game, it would probably be a ton of fun. As it stands, it is a game that is rather underwhelming in the long run despite having so many good things going for it. So again, 2.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.